Now, adjust the volume control so that the sound can be heard in all parts of the room. This is the Protect Your Assets podcast. You get the idea? Bring me a dream. It's on the internet. Make him the cutest that I've ever seen. Go on. Give him two lips. Like it's like no cheese I've ever tasted. And tell him that it's lost. Here's the Sandman. Over Sandman. According to a recent retirement survey, those who work with a financial advisor have almost double the monthly income over those who don't. Do you want more income? Well, then stay tuned for this special episode of Protect Your Assets as we celebrate our fan favorite Halloween episode. Good morning. Spooky. Good morning. Well, welcome to Protect Your Assets. I am David Hollander, your host, and it's so great to be with you this morning. I look forward to this entire show. For those of you just joining us for the first time, welcome. People around here, they call me the Sandman, and that's because I help my listeners sleep well at night by answering their most troubled tax, legal, or financial questions each week, and that's because I run a tax, financial, and legal firm. So Tuesday night is Halloween, and I love my treats as much as any person. In fact, I really have a serious sweet tooth when it comes to dark chocolate salted almonds. In fact, you'll see me in that Trader Joe's section picking those up just about every other week. So in honor of this special night, I started thinking about five tricks, not treats, that financial advisors are using right now to dupe unknowing investors into making bad investment choices, which end up costing you lots of money. So if you want to avoid getting tricked into bad investments, scammed into paying excessive fees, or avoid getting duped by the latest fraudsters we've come across, then this episode is just for you. It'll be entertaining. And it's all coming up next, so keep it right here. Now, let's get started. Quite a week on Wall Street. Is this a run-of-the-mill correction, or is it something worse? Stocks entered correction territory this past week as the uh, S&P 500 was down about 10% from the peak in late July, renewed by a rise in long-term government bond yields and mixed earnings from megatech companies. So the Dow was off for the week 2.1%, S&P off 2.5%. Dow now is negative for the year. So the Dow is down 2.2% for the year to date. S&P is still up over 7. NASDAQ up over 20 still, but down 26 for the week. The uh, MSCI, that international index, which was positive forever now, is negative. It's down 0.1% for the year to date. For the week, it was off just about 1%. And the uh, 10-year Treasury uh, closed at 4.83% this week. Year to date, still up 1%. Oil, oil had a uh, decent little pullback here, down 3.3% for the week, closing at $85.21 a barrel. And bonds, year to date. With this rise, we're down 2.2% overall. So I got a great question. This came from a listener who was saying, hey, I saw this article. I don't know if you saw this. This was in the Wall Street Journal this past week. And the title of the article is was this. It was called, Another Black Monday May Be Around the Corner. Now, Robert, who happens to be down in Santa Ana, he must listen to the Southern California show, Robert asked me this question. He said he read the article and he wanted to know about Black Monday. Is another crash imminent was his question. So Robert, thanks for pointing this out. I'm gonna get through this article here because it's interesting. It basically is talking about Black Monday. And for those of you who remember, Black Monday is vernacular for the stock market crash that we saw October 19th of 1987. I remember that day very well, because I remember friends of mine talking about getting in the stock market, and there's a couple stocks that we bought together, and we lost a lot of money. <laughs> it was that fast. 
And I started to learn about, well, stocks aren't just something you just put money in and just automatically goes up. It doesn't work that way. And so that event, looking at the article, first of all, was caused by a multitude of factors. One of the biggest ones at that time was the creation of what we now look at daily, which are stock index futures. Now, at that time, those were illiquid. And there was very little volume, and there wasn't a lot of understanding in the marketplace about what those actually meant. So what happened is uh, on a Sunday night, there was a lot of selling. And because it was such a low volume, it caused the Dow to fall 22% in just one day. Now, I know during the pandemic, we had some times like that. You may remember that. So we're not, you know, so... uh, shocked by that anymore, but still, it's a pretty big drop if you see it in one day, especially with a big index, right? And so that is related in this article to um, AI-driven and these algorithms, these trading, these, uh, you know, formulas that drive the market and maybe something similar. Well, again, I'm going to disagree with that because today we have this breaker system. It's like a circuit breaker. And in the last 15 years, we've had several instances where things have failed and the breakers go off. It makes everybody pause. You can't trade for a while. And that tends to let people sort of rejuvenate and think about it before they just start selling. We didn't have that on Black Monday in 1987. So that's a difference. The plumbing is more advanced. (laughs) We're We're not just using you know, old metal piping that clogs up anymore, right? You can free flow it. All right, enough of that. I had my chaga today. Second, the thesis of Wall Street Journal article is this, the M2 money supply. What the heck is M2 money? Now, I know you listen to the show because you do get some education. That's good. So what's M2? M2 is basically cash, checking accounts savings, things that are liquid. You can convert to cash right now if you want to. And the article talks about how the M2 money supply has gone down 3.9% in less than a year. And that when you compare that to, get this, the 1933 Great Depression, they're similar. So logically, you're drawing the conclusion that, oh, my, the money supplies dropped just as much. Rates are rising. Uh, are we going to have another Great Depression? That's, that's, that's what the article is talking about. And I can understand the logic. And I'm going to agree that M2, which is, again, cash, has declined at the fastest pace year over year since the Depression. But here's where we think a little bit. And we can't look at that decline most recently in a vacuum. Why? Because the Fed increased M2 by, get this, $6 trillion in two years. <laughs> so it's dropped about a trillion since that happened. But if you look at M2 currently, it's still at $5 trillion. And so, yes, I agree with the article, pace and direction matter, but so too does absolute value. And if you consider how much money, seriously, how much money has been created by the Fed in the last couple of years, you got a, you got a long way to go before that money supply gets into really the kind of trouble we're talking about for the Depression. So <clears throat> I disagree with the article in several instances And the point of this isn't to try and imply that, look, we're not facing a slowdown. I've been talking about that for a while, that we are looking at a slowdown. It's going to come. But I don't think it's going to come until later this year or early next year. And I do think that stocks are going to start to suffer like they have been. And look, I've been saying this for months now. I've been talking about this. Go back and listen. So I don't see the drop in M2 or the fact that the economy is slowing down or that the market's starting to pull back, that it's increasing the chance of a Black Monday. I just don't see that. 
absent some surprising event. Because today, let's face it, we get surprises all the time. And anything could happen, and it could certainly be a surprise, which the market won't like. So I think until that happens, we need to keep looking at the data like we do each week, because I believe that's truly the key to navigating this market over the medium and longer term. All right, so next question you want to know is, well, what should I be doing right now then? Well, first and foremost, um, for the support level on the 10-year treasury, I just mentioned where we close for the week, 4.83%. Uh, Your <clears throat> upside uh, resistance level on the 10-year is a 515. So just from the uh, charting we're doing right now, we're seeing 515 as the as the support, meaning if it broke through that, the tenure could run higher, which wouldn't be good for stocks. So right now we're we're in this 483 range. Saw 5% last week, week before that. Where will it go? We'll see. S&P 500. I know you all want to know about that because you remember last week I talked about 4250 and we broke that this week, didn't we? And we closed at 4117. Okay, so the next support level, 39.80. Write that down, 39.80, another 5% or so. When I come back, are you working with a financial advisor? Well, if so, are they doing everything they can to help you do better? I'll tell you what to watch out for when we return. You're listening to The Sandman on the Protect Your Assets Radio Network. We'll be right back. Take the first step toward reaching your financial goals and get the information that can help you live a confident retirement. That first step is going to PYAEvents.com and signing up for our next free event. That's PYAEvents.com. Now back to Protect Your Assets with David Hollander, the Sandman. Welcome back. I am David Hollander, also known as the Sandman. And you are listening to our fan favorite Halloween episode this morning. Tuesday night is Halloween, and I love seeing all the kids of all ages, the 16-year-old awkward one in the big candy bar, the three-year-old who's so excited as the door opens, and I love their costumes. Great candy. Come ring the doorbell and say, trick or treat with this in theme in mind. I want to help you uncover some of the top tricks financial advisors are using right now, so hopefully you can avoid them. If you've wondered about bad investments, excessive fees, or getting duped by fraudsters, then this episode of Protect Your Assets is designed just for you because we've identified five of the latest tricks, not treats, that the industry is using to get more of your money. And so let's jump into them. And so the first trick I'm going to call it, not a treat, that some advisors use could really end up costing you pretty big. And some, sometimes these, these aren't meaning, meaningful. In other words, they don't mean to do this. It just happens. What am I talking about? We all know that at some point, the market or the Humpty Dumpty will fall off the wall, right? It's going to go down. It's been going down now for the last couple of weeks since July. We've had really nothing very positive happen. The market's been going down. And the question is, when it does happen, when we actually drop into, say, a bear market or a recession, another 10% or so from here, and you're retired and you need that monthly income to keep coming, has your advisor developed an income plan for you that protects a portion of your portfolio so it can keep generating that income as the market's going down? Or are you going to be forced to sell things? Because if you're investing in, say, traditional stocks and bonds, in your portfolio, you need to check and see how your account did. Go back to the 2022 statements. Because if you are about to enter retirement, that kind of market can create some serious problems for you. You see, in 2022, when stocks are down over 20% in some cases, and many bond funds were down more than 15% or more in some cases, the question you should ask yourself now, well, if that happens again, and you're retired and you're, you know, you set it on autopilot, in other words, just sending you money every month. 
what will you do with your portfolio? What will you have to sell in order to continue to create that monthly income? How will it affect your overall monthly income? So if you're curious about this phenomenon, uh, we did a show on this. It's called the Sequence of Return, SOR, Sequence of Return Risk. And you can learn a lot more about what that is and how you check that out by going back and listening to the podcast. So wherever you get your podcasts, just type in Protect Your Assets, look for the Sequence of Return show, and I did a whole show on it. But just putting it out there simply, the concept is this. You're forced to liquidate things that you don't really want to in a down market to sustain your lifestyle. And you can't control that because you need what you need monthly to pay your bill. And now the market's down and it's down for longer than you want it to be. You may remember back to 2000 to 2003, that took three years. And in the Great Depression, it took over 20 years to get back to normal. If you missed the market segment, go listen to it. But these things happen and they do last a while and you need your income. So question, why would you take that risk when it comes to your monthly income? Maybe because you just don't know, or maybe your advisor doesn't know. I mean, that, that's also something you could ask. Of course, you probably wouldn't do it if you knew what I was talking about. So get educated about what SOR risk is and how you can create a portfolio that has a bucket that's designed to be immune from the SOR virus. The next problem I see with advisors is they invest and forget about you. Put another way, has your advisor made trades in your account this year if they have discretion? If they don't have discretion, have they called you lately with any new investment opportunities? Or if they have discretion, have you seen trades this year in your account? In this past year, we have seen some pretty good interest rates. I talked at the top of the show with how the markets have done. The S&P is still positive overall. NASDAQ is still up. Dow now is down. So in the past year, these interest rates that we've seen, which are pretty good, they have affected bonds as well as fixed indexed annuities. And so as we do our reviews, we've been reaching out to clients and letting them know about these new opportunities that could exist. So if you haven't heard about any of these income ideas that are producing 8 to 10% income for life, then you should pick up the phone and give us a call. Because if you're not hearing about these, it might be a sign that your advisor isn't looking out for you or trying to improve your plan. And so I'll just ask you a question. Are you dreaming of retiring early? Well, if you are, it's a fresh morning out there. Find out if you're ready right now. How do you do that? Well, I have a complimentary retirement checklist that you can go through at your leisure to see how prepared you really are. If you would like this, we can email it to you right now. It's absolutely complimentary, but you got to give us a call. Call this number, 866-PROTECT. My phone number, it's 866-776-8328. You can pick up the phone right now, speak to a member of my team who's sitting right here. Hey, what's going on, Cam? Say hello to Cam. Uh, this morning, ready to help you. So pick up the phone right now, call 866-PROTECT and get your report. Coming up next, it's time for our popular They Say segment, where they say you should take your Social Security now before it runs out. What do you say? Well, find out. You don't want to miss this one. You're listening to Protect Your Assets with the Sandman. We will be right back. Take the first step toward reaching your financial goals and get the information that can help you live a confident retirement. That first step is going to PYAEvents.com and signing up for our next free event. That's PYAEvents.com. Now back to Protect Your Assets with David Hollander, the Sandman. Welcome back to Protect Your Assets. I am David Hollander and Tuesday night is Halloween. 
So this is our uh, popular Halloween episode. I am uh, getting ready to see all the trick-or-treaters in our neighborhood. With uh, Halloween theme in mind, we do our annual Halloween show where we share some of the top tricks financial advisors are using right now. So if you've wondered about bad investments, excessive fees, or getting duped by fraudsters, then this episode of Protect Your Assets is designed just for you. Now it's time for one of our fan favorite parts of our show, our They Say segment, where we debunk common myths, half-truths, and sometimes just bad advice that they say. Who are they? What do they know that I don't? And what are they saying this week? Here's David Hollander, the Sandman's answer. All I know is that I don't All right, so here's one they say. In fact, I hear this probably once a month. They say, again, these are some other advisors, say that you should take your Social Security now because it's going to run out. After all, you paid into it. It's yours. So should you take it? Well, that depends. Now, I'm an attorney, so I can say that. (laughs) On balance, you need to do your homework. And there was an article that came out recently. There was a survey done here in 2023 by Schroeder's. And so the first thing that you need to check with your advisor is, is he or she skilled in Social Security? Do they have a lot of experience with it? Have they done multiple cases? Do they have the software that runs simulations to see what could happen with Social Security? And then are they advising you on how to access it and what to do? Because any advisor working with retirees should be well-versed in Social Security. And the taxes that go along with Social Security, and they should be able to develop a plan that avoids, we're going to call it the Social Security tax torpedo. You like that one? You learned a new phrase, the Social Security tax torpedo. What I mean by this is if you are going to receive any income in retirement, In addition to your Social Security income, like what, he says? Well, pensions. What about the RMD from your IRA, your 401k? How about rents? You have real estate. You get rents every month. Even tax-free municipal bond income, all those sources hit your Social Security. So you have to plan for the tax that will be imposed on your Social Security before it happens or else, guess what? You're going to have a problem. Like what? Well, by not planning for the Social Security tax torpedo, you could pay 40 to 50% tax on that Social Security. That's right. We know taxes are going up in a few years. You're going to be drawing down on your Social Security probably at that time. And when you start to add other sources of income, you're going to be paying a lot of tax. Like, how does this work? If you're an individual filer, between $25,000 and $34,000 of income, combined income, 50% of that benefit will be taxable. Over $34,000, 85%. I'm not making this up. 85% of your benefit may be taxable. You filed jointly, thirty-two to forty-four thousand hit at fifty percent. Over forty-four, you're looking at eighty-five percent. If you live in the Bay Area, you certainly are making that kind of money, which means a big portion of your Social Security will be taxable. Now, I'm not saying you're going to pay eighty-five percent tax. Here's how this works. What it means is if you combine your Social Security income, let's say it's a married couple getting about eighty thousand dollars a year from Social Security. And let's say you have some other income from pensions, from rents, from bond interest. At least 68,000 or 85% of the 80,000, you understand what I just said? Will be hit with your respective tax rate as ordinary income as you add that other income like RMDs, pension, et cetera, on top of that. So that 68,000 of Social Security is going to be taxed again. Now, I know this is horrifying. You're probably shaking right now in your boots. 
You already paid taxes on your Social Security income as you worked and worked and worked all those years. You saw it on your pay stub. And now they're going to tax you again and then again. Because if you think about it, 50 or 85% of the benefit is a tax. And then they're taxing it again at your ordinary income tax rate. <sighs> I know. So if your advisor is not digging into your tax return and modeling future tax rates and what you're going to be paying in taxes on your investments, then what are they doing for you? Yeah, okay, maybe they're helping you make money. Good. But if you're going to pay a lot of tax on all that money, how good is the return really? I've also heard recently that their advisor had special proprietary, quote, funds or investments that were only available to the clients of that firm. Do you think these advisors are only showing you those funds because they get paid more money? Many proprietary funds have internal expenses which pay not only your advisor, but also the manager and the investment company. Depending on how you are invested, your management fee, in addition to your internal expenses, can create a high, even excessive fee, which reduces the overall growth in your account. This is an additional fee that could be reduced if you work with a financial advisor who manages investments in more cost-efficient ways. Well, how do you really know what you're paying or what your current plan is costing you? Do you know? I'm asking the question. Because this is horrifying, really. As you start to write down the fees and the expenses, and that comes out every year, that does reduce your overall return. And that puts less money in your pocket and less money over the long term for you to live off of. So how do you find out what this is really costing you? Well, there is a way to do that. You can find out. We have, this is not science fiction, even though I love Halloween and all the stuff that goes along with it. We have an x-ray machine that can perform an x-ray on your portfolio, on your funds that you're invested in. And we can print out a report that shows you what those fees are. So you have to ask yourself the question, am I being overcharged right now? And if you're just not sure, then I'm going to give you something you can do. You can pick up the phone. You can do something about it. Pick up the phone and dial this number to get your portfolio x-ray. Customized to you. Complimentary. 866-776-8328. We're here. We're local. My team's ready to answer the phone right now and talk to you and get you this x-ray. Just like the Ghostbusters, 866-PROTECT to find out what you're paying. 866-PROTECT to save more money. Let us do the heavy lifting. Just call us. Coming up next on Protect Your Assets, find out how one of the nation's largest advisors said you could take out 7% per year from your retirement account and not run into any problems. Find out how one family almost lost everything sticking with that advice. Keep it right here. We'll be right back. If you missed any of Protect Your Assets with David Hollander, all you have to do is go to PYARadio.com where you can download or listen to our latest shows for free. Just go to PYARadio.com on your computer or mobile device when it's most convenient for you. That's PYARadio.com. Now back to Protect Your Assets with David Hollander, the Sandman. Welcome back. I am David Hollander, also known as the Sandman. And you're listening this morning to Protect Your Assets. And on today's Halloween-themed episode, we're helping you protect yourself 
from some truly ghastly financial advice as we've been talking about five tricks, not treats, that at financial advisors who just aren't informed, just aren't armed with all the tools that are available today are actually costing you money. And so if you want to avoid getting into these bad investments or paying excessive fees, being able to save more money, then this episode was designed just for you. So today we've been uncovering some pretty horrifying practices that financial advisors are using right now. Uh, One of them had to do with tax, paying much more taxes than you should be on your investments without focusing on that. Uh, Also, higher fees you could be paying through proprietary funds. And last, we were talking about how you're actually losing income by just not doing Social Security correctly. And Social Security is very challenging. There's many different ways to take it. A lot of people think it's not going to be there or that uh, the system's going to run out. And if you're not educated about it, you could be making some pretty bad decisions that could cost you literally hundreds of thousands of dollars. So you don't want to play around with that one. So that leads me to the fifth and final trick. You've probably heard these commercials out there. Regular looking guy or gal, nice office, quote, they're on your side. They really do have great marketing and they say they're all about lower fees and helping you. But If they're telling you to take 7% out of your account each and every year and that the market will do the rest, well, watch out because as markets are down right now, how are you doing? Where are you year to date total return? We came across a family who had retired, sold their business and were with this group and they were taking 7% out because that's what they were told to do each and every year to live on. And the last time the market dropped pretty pretty substantially, well, that longer bear market came along. And as they continued to take that 7% out, their portfolio was down over 50%. And guess what? The withdrawal started to become a problem. Because as the portfolio goes down, it takes more money to maintain your lifestyle, particularly with inflation. And if you missed the show last week where we were talking about inflation and how inflation literally robs you of your purchasing power. You know what I'm talking about right now? If you go to the grocery store, you buy any services right now. I mean, everything's much more expensive, isn't it? I mean, it feels like, wow, 25, 30%. You're right. I mean, everything's gone up. And so when you add that on top of market performance and needing that income to live on, especially when there's volatility or a recession just around the corner. I talked about that at the top of the market show segment we did. Then you've got some problems. You got to be careful. And when it comes to withdrawing money out of your account, you're no longer just saving. You know, we talked to a lot of folks who've been saving for years. They've been working all these years, just putting it away, doing it automatically. We talked to someone this week. I remember she was a a nurse over at UCSF. has been working there forever getting ready to wind things down. And she was saying, you know, I'm just used to putting it away. I don't really look at it anymore. And we said, okay, but you want to stop working next year? Yes. Okay, well, you're going to have to start taking income off of that because here's how much you're spending every month. And your Social Security and your pension's just not going to cover it. So you're going to need to make that up from your retirement account. And we started explaining to her how that works. And what she needs to pull out of that. And okay, now I understand. So it's a different mindset. It's, it's different. And so this is what we do. We've been doing this for over 30 years. You got to be careful about how you withdraw money out of your account to live on each and every year between now and the day you're no longer here. It's really that simple. And you want to be able to look at it and model it and stay on top of it or else you're going to have some problems. It's just that simple. And you certainly don't want to be retired thinking everything is fine. And then all of a sudden being told out of nowhere, you need to change your lifestyle dramatically or you could outlive your money. I mean, this happens. So don't be that person. Think about this. We do know that the 2018 tax rates are going to phase out in just about over a year. 
What that means is it's now the time to pay less in taxes and keep more of your hard-earned savings before 2023 is over. And then you can start planning for 24, and then that's it. December 31st, 2023 is just around the corner. Before it's too late, get answers that you've been looking for right now to find out what you can do today to pay less taxes on your income here for 2023. You don't think you could do anything about it? You're wrong. There's many different things you can do right now before the year runs out to pay less taxes. Remember, we do taxes here. We manage money. We are attorneys. We do all that here. It's a one-stop shop. So get your personalized tax savings coaching call right now by a member of my team. This will be absolutely complimentary, but you need to give us a call. And in this analysis, you're going to find out some simple yet effective strategies to convert more of your savings into consistent tax-free income month after month. You'll also learn how to avoid the Social Security tax torpedo I was talking about earlier. This analysis is really suited for those who are recently retired or looking to retire within the next five years. And if you have over $250,000 of earned income this year, you definitely want to give us a call. You might expect to spend thousands of dollars for this kind of information, but for all of my listeners this morning, it's absolutely complimentary. Consider it the house with the big candy bar. Call 866-PROTECT. That's 866-776-8328 to get the answers that you've been looking for. 866-PROTECT. I'd like to give a big thanks to the Protect Your Asses team for putting together another great Halloween spectacular episode. My executive producer and network manager, Kevin Renfer, and of course, all my fabulous producers back there helping out today. We got Cam, we got Phil, and uh, of course, Raph there in the studio, because without my team, I'm just another pretty voice on the radio. You've been listening to the Protect Your Asset Show. I am David Hollander, also known as the Sandman. Go out and make the rest of your life the best of your life. Happy Halloween. Investment advisory services are offered through Liberty Wealth Management, a registered investment advisor. This podcast is for informational purposes only and should not be relied upon as a basis for investment decisions. The strategies mentioned are not suitable for everyone. The information expressed does not consider your specific situation or objectives and may not be appropriate for all investors. Past performance is not indicative of future results. To better understand the risk associated with investing and how it reacts to different market conditions, listeners should always consult with their qualified investment professionals, financial advisors, legal or tax specialists and conduct their due diligence before making any financial decisions or taking any action. The legal information provided on the air is not intended to substitute for callers hiring their lawyers to advise them about personal legal matters. Investments involve risk and unless otherwise stated are not guaranteed. Liberty Group LLC paid for the following program and the host's views and opinions do not represent those of the station or its ownership. California Life Agent number 048569. Persons engaging the services of one affiliate of Liberty Group LLC companies should be aware that each company is operated separately. You're listening to the Protect Your Assets Radio Network.